This is Stephanie Huff and I am recording a, on a concept on violence. This one is about abuse. An overview. Abuse can happen to any individual at any age from any demographic or sociocultural background. It does not happen only to weak individuals but it can also happen to those that have strong personalities too. Many cases um, about 80 will go unreported due to fear or threats from the abuser. So there's a large percentage that won't even report um, that they've been abused. Looking at the pathophysiology, <clears throat> abuse is often related to control. There are three main forms of abuse. There's physical, emotional, and sexual. They all work together um, basically towards um, breaking down a person's self-confidence and self-worth. There are common elements of abuse are humiliation, intimidation, and physical injury threats. Um, so basically they just um, threaten them that if they say anything that they'll hurt them more or um, even kill them and you know things like that. Physical abuse is generally accompanied by emotional abuse as well. Abuse involves the use of control and manipulation. Abuse sometimes starts as emotional abuse, um, telling the victim that they're not smart enough or no one will ever love them. And then over time, it will the abuse can escalate to a physical abuse or even a sexual abuse. Looking at the different types of abuse, first we're going to talk about child abuse. Um, any recent act or failure to act on part um, of the parent or caregiver that presents imminent risk of harm to the child or if it results in death. Serious physical and emotional harm, sexual abuse, or exploitation are all symptoms of child abuse. There are three forms. Neglect um, has the highest percentage of childhood mistreatment in the United States. And then you also have physical abuse as well as sexual abuse. For child abuse, the per perpetrators most often are their parents, um, but it can also be child care providers, relatives, or a partner or spouses, um, a spouse of a child's parent. So um, it may be their new girlfriend or new boyfriend is the one that is abusing the child. Uh, some of your nursing considerations is needing to provide a child-friendly environment. You need to build rapport and trust with the child. Um, participate in active listening. Uh, believe in the kid um, no matter what they tell you. Um, but also know that there is a potential for a false report. Um, it happens rarely but it is um, a possibility that they um, just make the whole thing up and nothing ever really happened. Um, because abused kids um, are deprived of control, you want to try to shift that control back to the child and help them feel empowered. So these are um, just some pictures showing just signs of abuse. Um, basically humiliating them into not telling and threatening them, um, screaming at them, um, and that's a lot of that emotional um, and verbal abuse. And then you see the signs of physical abuse, whether it be um, beating them and having them black eyes and bruises and cuts on their heads. And um, the bottom left picture is actually where this kid was tied to his bed because he wet his bed and so his um, one of his parents tied him to the bed. Alright, so nursing considerations of child abuse. Uh, you want to begin the discussion with safe topics, um, talking to the kid um, about school, their friends, their favorite color, um, what books I like to read, um, things like that, um, and then and then after you build sort of a good um, trust with the kid, 
then you can start um, asking about the injuries and how they happened. Um, don't lie or make false promises. And so that would be um, you can't say that whatever you tell me is we'll keep it a secret because there is um, mandatory reporting of child abuse um, and so nurses are um, mandated by law that they have to report um, any information that is given by the um, by the child about the um, scenario and things that happened. Uh, you do want to make sure that you're using age appropriate language for the child um, as well as with communication. Um, it does help the, the child feel more comfortable talking more on their level. It is very important to believe the child no matter what is disclosed. Alright, another type of abuse is elder abuse. Most of the perpetrators are family members, but elder abuse is the intentional physical, emotional, or sexual mistreatment or neglect of a person 65 years of age or older. And different types of um, elder abuse can be physical, emotional, sexual, neglect, and also institutional abuse. Um, elder abuse results with um, decreasing in health, the inability to heal from broken bones, and increased risk of mortality. So these are um, some pictures. This lady has a broken arm that was done by a care assistant. Um, in this assisted living area where she lives. Um, and then you can see they're threatening this gentleman that's sitting in this wheelchair and probably telling him that if he needs to stay there and not get up and wander off. And they're threatening to do whatever, hurt him or take away some of his privileges. Um, another type of elder abuse is when the family um, can, tries to take control of all their money and does with it what they want to do with it instead of um, the wishes of the um, parent that has gotten elderly. Um, a lot of times they will often have them uh, sign over their possessions to them. Another type of abuse is sexual abuse. It is not also known as sexual violence. It is defined by the CDC as any sexual act committed against one's will. It includes rape, attempted, attempted sexual acts, unwanted sexual contact, voyeurism, which is a non-contact sexual abuse, um, and basically they watch people in secret um, as they're undressing or having intercourse with someone else. It also includes sexual harassment. All individuals are at risk for sexual harassment uh, regardless of gender, age, education, IQ level, or socioeconomic status. Uh, the perpetrator is often known by the victim. Um, sexual abuse of children is most often by family members or someone that the child knows. Another type of abuse is intimate partner violence. This is the act of inflicting intentional sexual, emotional, or physical abuse on current or a previous partner or spouse. Interpersonal partner, or excuse me, inter intimate partner violence can occur among any couple. It could be same-sex couples, adolescent couples, and older adult couples. There are four main types of abuse. Physical abuse, which is punching, kidding, kicking, um, or biting, 
sexual violence could be forced sexual contact, uh, physically um, violent sexual contact could be threats of both physical and sexual violence. Could also be emotional abuse, which would include humiliating the victim or controlling the victim by diminishing their self-esteem, stalking, um, repeated harassment, uh, threats, uh, following the victim, um, van or vandalizing the person's property, are all um, part of stalking. 50% of the victims of your intimate personal um, violence are men, so that means half are women. Most cases begin with mild emotional or physical abuse and escalate to a more severe violence or even end in death. Etiology of abuse. Neurobiology um, is the genetics believe that um, they believe that genetics play a role in anger modulation and emotional control. Genes and neurotransmitters may contribute. Um, low levels of MAOA which is often associated with antisocial behavior and aggression which is a genotype in the brain. Um, if they have this, they are more prone to be more aggressive if they have these low levels um, in high anxiety or emotional um, situations. So whenever they get very anxious or emotional, then they tend to become very aggressive. Further research is needed, though, regarding genes and the MAOA genotypes. Your psychopathology um, theory suggests um, that cause lies in personality disorder and mental illness of the abuser. Certain untreated disorders and diseases can result in violent tendencies. Your social learning theory. Violence is a learned behavior. Um, it is conditioned to respond um, aggressively and violently. Children are usually especially vulnerable. Um, you want to watch family members and learn through observation, um, victimization. Abuse may be physical, emotional, or psychological. The cycle usually within the family, and so they learn it from watching like their mothers, and so they grow up and they watch people be abused, or they were abused, and so they abuse other people because that's what all they know. So it ends up being this vicious cycle. Um, environmental factors, um, there may be some frustration, increased stress that leads to unrestrained anger. Risk factors, age kind of plays a role in being a risk. If younger children or an older adults, um, they have an increased risk because the abusers think of them as weak and helpless. Um, those with illnesses and disabilities have highest risk factors for all forms of abuse. Gender, um, there are similar levels of maltreatment for boys and girls in child abuse. Um, women experience more intimate personal violence and elder abuse. Your physiologic development. Illnesses and disabilities um, cause them to be more likely to be seen as easy targets. Um, basically, the abuser thinks that they won't or can't report the crime. Um, so intellectual, physical, learning disabilities, you can have visual, um, hearing impairment, dementia, Alzheimer's, those are all um, puts them at increased risk. Usually they're seen as easy, easy targets. Cultural factors. Children being punished for uh, not following directions um, is usually seen as an okay type of punishment 
but when it gets too forceful, then it turns into abuse. Women are at greater risk for interpersonal violence in patriarchal cultures, and that's where the man is the head of the household. Um, the men are granted um, financial and physical control over the woman. Your socioeconomic factors, um, some researchers think that um, the culture of poverty predicts child abuse and neglect. It says the, um, the stress of poverty can lead to frustration, anger, and potential um, physical and emotional abuse. Looking at substance abuse, alcohol and substance abuse don't create abusive situations. Um, it really depends on the personality of the potential abuser and other factors. Um, if there's already an um, abusive relationship going on, then the use of alcohol and substances can make the abusive situation much worse. Um, substance abuse by family members increases the risk for childhood um, maltreatment as well. Other risk factors are having firearms in the home. There are many variables um, such as the type, which could be handgun, rifle, or shotgun, the storage, um, whether it be a locked gun cabinet, a nightstand, drawer, or a secured gun room, the location of the incident, um, be in the city, urban area, or in the rural community. Handguns do represent about 72.5% of all murder weapons. 36.5% females are killed by their husband or boyfriend. 42.9% are killed during arguments, and that includes romantic arguments. Prevention comes from various levels, um, including the individual, community, society, uh, relationship, and parenting. Often, part of familial or personal cycle has been going on for years, um, and so the nurses need to observe for these signs and symptoms of violence, um, especially if you've got um, like grandparents, parents, and kids all together and kind of watching and observing for um, those subtle signs that you may see. They need to work to address the situation um, if they discover one. They are mandated that they must report child abuse. In adults, um, basically it's their choice to seek help um, in stopping the situation. Um, all you can do is refer to other health care providers, police, lawyers. Um, if they desire, you can help them with the resources, um, but it's ultimately their uh, decision to seek help. Looking at clinical manifestations, the signs of abuse can vary based on the population that is being abused and the type of abuse. Um, so an intimate partner violence manifestations um, usually show signs of intense fear and control. Um, they usually have no access to cash. They uh, usually lose contact with family and friends. In physical and emotional abuse, the signs may vary uh, according to the different populations. Signs of sexual abuse are pretty consistent though across um, the age demographics. Vigilance is needed to assess for signs of abuse by nurses. So manifestations of child abuse behaviors um, are inconsistent with their developmental age. Um, a lot of times they'll kind of regress back. So some uh, child that has not used a bottle in years may decide that they want to use a bottle again um, or they may start wetting the bed. Signs of long-term traumatic physical abuse could include poor language, cognitive, emotional, um, and emotional development. This is usually caused by the stress of the abuse. The psychological manifestations 
um, include childhood depression, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, even learning disorders. They usually have a loss of interest in academics or start to perform poorly in school. You may see burns, welts, broken bones that are healing in uh, various stages. You may see burns and scars that are in specific shapes like a cigarette butt or if they burned them with some kind of object that has a recognizable shape. Behavioral extremes uh, with withdrawal and regression. You may see different burns in various stages of healing. Um, inappropriate responses to pain. So sometimes that things that you would think should hurt them don't hurt them at all because they're so used to pain. Other times they may start um, inappropriately screaming before you've even touched them. Uh, fractures, spiral fractures um, are an important finding because um, that could indicate a twisting motion of their um, arms or legs that causes that um, fracture. That's usually a sign of abuse. Um, but you also have to ask how the injury happened um, because sometimes the way that they fail or um, whatever happened in the injury, it would make sense for them to have a spiral, spiral fracture. Um, but sometimes they'll say they fell off the bed but their leg didn't get caught or they fell on the steps. Um, and the mechanism of injury does not fit the um, injuries that present and the x-ray and what the x-rays show so a lot of times those are inconsistent you may see joint swelling and limited mobility of joints uh, human bite marks your behavioral extremes of withdrawal and aggression they may have recurrent urinary tract infections you'll see that with um, some sexual abuse. They may have bleeding or draining from their ears, which could be signs of head trauma. Uh, they also have may signs of intracranial trauma, uh, long bone deformities from usually from fractures that uh, maybe they didn't seek treatment for that did not heal correctly, lacerations, broken and loose teeth. These are just some um, pictures of different things that um, are causing by abuse. And so you can see a couple of fractures. Um, one is a spiral fracture. You can see lots of bruising and the circles that appear to be cigarette burns, bruising the buttocks. Um, you can see got burned with a steam iron, got the shape of an iron on the forearm. Then you've got um, bruises on this kid with, they beat him with some kind of cord or something that um, actually cut into his skin. And you see he's got a bloody nose as well. So manifestations of elder abuse. Neglect is manifest, manifested by bed sores and untreated illnesses or injuries. They may have sold clothing and bed sheets where they've been incontinent and nobody's bothered to clean them up. Uh, weight loss and overall poor hygiene. Depression or withdrawal from normal activities. You may see bruises, contusions, or broken bones. Um, there's an assessment, um, full assessment is going to be needed if abuse is suspected. These are, you can see bed sores and um, bruising around the eyes, even breaking their glasses on purpose or their hearing aids just because they know they can't see without their glasses and they can't hear without their hearing aids. And so that is actually a form of elder abuse as well. Um, constant hunger or malnutrition and dehydration are signs of elder abuse. Then being listless poor hygiene, 
social isolation, so they're just basically isolated from everybody else with no contact, um, inappropriate dress for the weather, and it may just be that that's the only clothes that they have, or nobody is able to help them. Sometimes it may be that they're trying to cover up um, bruises and injuries that have been occurred. And so this is where basically in this nursing home they have put all the patients in chairs in the hallway and they've left them there for the entire day. And then we've got um, an elderly lady that has a broken arm um, by one of the um, care assistants that were in the facility had um, grabbed her arm forcefully. You see another bed sore on a heel and then they've put these ladies in front of this window so that they can look outside but then they just leave them there all day. The victims may be withdrawn or combative. Uh, they may have feelings of guilt, anxiety, depression, maybe some suicidal thoughts and fears are very common. Children Early sexual, they may have early sexual knowledge and early interest in sexual acts. If they have been um, a victim of child abuse, others may regress and maybe wet the bed or have insomnia. Your physical manifestations are going to be injuries to genitals, the anus, swollen genitals, um, bladder and kidney infections sexually transmitted infections, pelvic inflammatory disease, unintended pregnancies, manifestations of intimate partner violence are similar. Um, they will have similar, similar physical manifestations to other um, forms of abuse such as bruises, broken bones, knife wounds, head injuries, and headaches. Victims may start to use alcohol and other substances to cope with or ignore the abuse. They usually have um, depression, suicidal uh, attempts, fear, and avoidance of social situations. Victims often are cut off from support by the abuser. The abusers often accompany the victims to the hospital to ensure that they don't ask for help. So a lot of times it's hard to get the victim by themselves to talk to them away from the abuser. So sometimes you have to be um, be creative and have her tell her you need a urine specimen um, and get her in the bathroom. And then sometimes you can get in there with, with her by herself and be able to talk to her away from the abuser. Some of your lifespan and cultural considerations. Some acts or traditions appear to be abusive, but they're not, like cupping and coining. Cupping is placing a cup on the skin and then using heat to create a suction, and it's done to promote blood flow and overall healing. And so it ends up making this um, sort of whelped up, very red, dark, dark reddish purple. Um, so it could look like abuse, but it's really not. Another one is coining, and it's used to treat many ailments like headaches, fevers, and minor illnesses. And they use a warm oil that's rubbed on the skin, and then they use a coin, and they rub it back diagonal um, lines, and they make these really long marks that appear. Um, and so it actually looks like somebody has been beat with a whip, um, but it is actually um, not even a form of abuse. Some, um, and these are usually practiced by your Asian cultures, both the cupping and the coining. Some acts that are acceptable in one culture and are not accepted, acceptable in Western culture. Um, and that's like hitting the wife for disobedience or hitting children with objects as a form of punishment. Um, spanking or hitting the hand um, may be acceptable in some areas and not in others. And then... Hitting the um, harming the child by hitting them with cords to leave cuts, 
um, is acceptable in some cultures and is considered abuse in other cultures. Uh, nurses must be mindful of cultural considerations when they're um, dealing with different cultures so that they are aware of what things are considered um, traditions versus um, acceptable versus abuse. Collaboration, there's a multiple multidisciplinary approach, nurses, social workers, protective service personnel, uh, law enforcement, and even lawyers. Your diagnostic tests, different imaging could be CTs, MRIs, x-rays, and ultrasounds uh, to see um, like bleeding in the brain or in the um, abdomen or broken bones. Lab work is done and all this is used to document the abuse. Pharmacologic therapy is going to vary uh, widely. Pain medications, sedatives, and anti-inflammatory medications are used for broken bones and dislocations, your stabbings and gunshot wounds, um, antibiotics for um, possible infections, your SSRIs for your post-traumatic stress disorder along with psychotherapy. The FDA has approved two medications for the use in PTSD, your sertraline, which is Zoloft, and paroxetine, which is Paxil. Uh, tetanus boosters and vaccines needed to be updated for deep penetrating wounds. Non-pharmacologic therapy, physical effects of abuse will often heal long before the emotional effects even start to fade. The use of therapy, counseling, and support groups are going to be most common, uh, commonly used or prescribed treatments for abuse. Domestic violence shelters offer a broad array of services, including immediate shelter, referrals to services, group therapy, advocacy, parent training, attorneys. Um, they usually give them a list of attorneys so that they can call. Pediatric considerations is going to be a multidisciplinary team in which the nurse is going to be the key. The nurse needs to ensure a safe and predictable environment for the child so that they feel supported um, at home, school, and other therapeutic places. They need to plan interventions that encourage infective release. Uh, play therapy is one uh, thing that's used to act out traumatic themes, fears, and distorted beliefs. Art therapy is used to express feelings for which there are no words. Therapeutic stories present traumatic issues. They link these to the child's feelings and describe coping mechanisms. Journal writing helps um, them cope with their thoughts and feelings. Looking at the nursing process, care is will vary depending on the type of abuse and the age of the client. The client's reaction to abuse also affects their care, um, especially if they have fear, shame, or self-blame. You need to assess the needs of the specific individuals and not treat them all as a typical abuse victim because each patient is different. Assessment, you need to assess in the order of severity of the injuries. So airway function, head trauma, broken bones, internal injuries, knife and gunshot wounds are going to be assessed first. With cuts and bruises and behavioral indications assessed after the patient's safety is ensured. You need to get a good complete medical history concerning um, everything that went on. You need to consider the client's emotional state. Uh, the client and the staff safety is a priority. These are your NANDA nursing diagnosis. Planning goals may include that the client will remain safe and free from harm. They will ask for help in resolving the abusive situation. They will honestly convey feelings of fear, anger, helplessness, and depression. They will report any suicidal ideations they may experience. They will not take responsibility for the abuse and know that it is not their fault. 
They will practice healthy coping mechanisms in promoting safety. Um, the priority is to ensure patient safety. You want to follow mandating reporting laws regarding child abuse and elder abuse. Some states have laws for intimate partner violence. Um, most states it's up to the victim to report it. There are um, use of specific weapons and nature of injury that does mandate reporting. Um, but those are specific according to your state laws. You also need to make sure that you're following your institutional policy and guidelines for reporting. When reporting is not mand mandatory, then you want to provide the client with resources for seeking help because then it would be up to them to report it. The client is the one that is ultimately decides whether to seek help and you need to support them and offer them resources and don't judge them or belittle them if they go against what you think is right. You want to establish a therapeutic relationship, um, establish trust with them, which is often very hard for those that are abused because they have a very um, strong mistrust for others. Um, especially if someone gets angry or frustrated with them. You need to ensure a judgment-free and safe setting for them to be in. Use age-appropriate consideration for suspected child abuse. The child needs to be to feel safe and secure, especially from potential abuser. Avoid leading questions like, did your mom slam your head into the counter? And use open-ended questions instead like, how did you hit your head? Facilitating communication. You need to understand the client's apparent disinclination to accept assistance. And that could be from fear of the abuser, lack of social support, and financial resources. It could also be from a sense of hopelessness. You want to connect them with community resources like law enforcement for restraining orders, social workers, counselors. Um, safe houses, assistance with social and financial resources, promoting empowerment. You want to try to help the client achieve a sense of control. Um, sometimes they're trying to regain this sense of control um, that was lost by the abuser because the abuser was always in control and did not let them have any control over anything. You also want to recommend uh, support groups and individual therapy. Evaluation. Expected outcomes may include that the client remains safe. They seek assistance when needed. They will demonstrate knowledge of available resources. They will verbalize not being deserving of the abuse or responsible for it. They will openly communicate fears about the abusive situation. So this is the end of abuse and as always if you have questions let me know and I will try to help clarify.